Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to answer a subscriber's question, something I've wanted to make a video on, I've thought about it, tried to structure it, I just haven't done it. Um, so I'm going to put this together as just kind of a quick answer, but trying to cover the basics for you to think about here. So uh, Spencer asks, do you still think that an MFE is a good path to quantitative finance? I've recently read that PhDs are becoming even more commonplace and expected. I'm starting college next year, planning to major in math and I'm trying to find the best path to get into quant finance. Uh, I've watched your videos for a few years now, and I'd really appreciate your current viewpoint on this. Okay, so where to start with this? More is always better. Not always, but in the quant world, right, the better degree you have, the better your chances of getting a job, right? It doesn't guarantee you a job, but the better it is. So if you have a PhD, get a PhD, right? PhDs are gonna, hands down be far better than a master's. A master's is the bare minimum, so you can't even, well, there are some banks that will hire bachelors, but it is extremely rare and it's career suicide as I've mentioned because you can't switch jobs, right? And I'm not gonna hire you if you've got even 15, 20 years experience with a bachelor's degree, uh, but you don't have, right, that degree here. That's just the bare minimum here. Uh, now coming down to MFE's PhD preference here, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, most firms, most companies, most banks specifically. So again, I work on the banking side more than the trading side. But for banks, we prefer PhDs for the vast majority of banks, especially if you wanna work at a big name global bank, okay? PhDs, PhDs, PhDs. Now, if I see a rock star master student, it doesn't mean we're not gonna interview them. We will interview them. I try to give master students more of a shot in a lot of ways because I have a master's degree. Uh, master students typically have more hands-on experience and practice a lot of times. Uh, master students usually enjoy coding. A lot of PhD students absolutely hate coding. Um, yes, I've seen PhD students that essentially don't function very well because they can't code. So yeah, they coded enough to get through their PhD, but it wasn't really enough to do quant finance. So I like PhDs, they have more experience, they have more knowledge, they have more research, but again, you have some of them that aren't so great at coding, and you also have a lot of them that are kind of, how to put it, they have an, an arrogant attitude of, I have a PhD, right, coding's beneath me, or I have a PhD, I'm not gonna do this, that, or the other, it's beneath me. And so we weed those people out as well because you don't wanna end up working with them. So PhD's definitely far better than a master's. Now, master's, though, as I mentioned, a lot of times master's students are a little more eager, a little more excited, a little more hands-on, and so, Again, we do look for master students occasionally. If I see a rock star master student, right, let's get them in, let's interview them, let's try to hire good, solid talent, regardless of the degree. So it doesn't necessarily mean like, I don't know, we don't look at solely the degree, right? You gotta, there's a lot of other factors, um, but that's part of it. The other piece here too is where did you get your degree from? So if you went to a really well-ranked school in that field of study, so again, it doesn't need to be necessarily like the best, I don't know, like you might say, oh, I went to Harvard, but if you have a degree in Harvard and it's a master's or PhD in English, it doesn't make any difference, right? So having a well-ranked degree and program from a well-known school also helps. So again, there's all these layerings here. Did you also publish? Did you write any sort of academic research? Was it good? Is it just generic nonsensical garbage that most master's students publish? If it is, it doesn't really count. So trying to think those things through as well. And then finally, the degree type. So did you master's or PhD in you know, math, statistics, uh, financial engineering, computational finance, financial mathematics, all that, right? That's what we're looking for here. We don't want somebody who's so unrelated, it's hard to connect. Um, as a piece of advice here, everyone thinks if you get a physics degree, like, I don't know, you're destined to be a quant. Um, I personally don't like hiring physicists because the majority of them can't connect the dots quickly enough because they don't have a background on what we're doing. And they think the world works in a hard science way. And finance and economics is a soft science. So their over-reliance in models and things a lot of times leads them astray. So again, I, if you can get something very specific to quant finance, it's typically better, okay? Now laying down the financial engineering masters, which is the same as computational finance, mathematical finance, and all that, right? Those, they have pros and cons. So. Let's look at master's PhD real quick. Masters are much shorter, but they cost a lot of money because you have to pay out of your pocket, okay? If you're in the US, it's gonna cost you between like, I don't know, 70 and 100, $120,000 for a master's. Uh, a PhD, if you're good, you're well-educated and you're doing it the right way, a PhD should be free, but it should take you between five and seven years in the US. 
three-year PhDs, I don't view you any differently than a master's student. So you need that five to seven years. Um, now again, the topics here is really challenging. It really depends what you're looking for when you're hiring. So getting someone with an applied math degree, whether it's a master's or PhD, uh, is gonna be more valuable in some areas. Okay, so a lot of times like stochastic calculus, right? Those working in derivative pricing, it's more math heavy. So you want people that already have a solid background in stochastic calculus who have taken the courses. Uh, I really hope they have a really solid foundation in mathematics. Um, statistics is the other big skill and the big area that I think a lot of banks, firms, hedge funds, all these things are looking for. Uh, and we're gonna just nest data science and machine learning as a subset of stats, because that's how I view it. Uh, it's gonna be inside of there. I want that well-rounded skill set, but again, you need to have a solid background in that. So having a stats background makes you very, very valuable across the board um, for a variety of different jobs in finance, banking, model development, validation, uh, hedge funds, right, all that type of stuff. Now, I should note here too, if you wanna do quantitative research, right, that's almost primarily done by PhDs. So if you wanna do research, for example, and anywhere across the industry, you really do need a PhD uh, I'm sure there's master students out there doing it, but it's extremely rare. So if you want to do research, you need the PhD. And then finally here on the whole MFE, comp finance, all that stuff, right? Those types of masters. The reason we're seeing more of a shift, I would say, in the industry as well as like the, the bar is getting higher and higher and higher, kind of as you mentioned. The reason why it's like we only really consider PhDs a lot of times is because these financial engineering type master's programs have essentially just gone down the drain. So when you look back, so we gotta go back in history again here, before they were very rigorous, very driven, very focused programs by only, I don't know, about 22 programs when I was going to school, for example. And so you wanted one that's very, very focused and you very focused on quant finance, financial engineering, okay? They're all in engineering schools, math departments, things like that, science departments, those sorts of programs. Now we have, an explosion of MFE programs, and the issue is all these new ones, or the majority of the new ones, there are some good ones that are new, but the explosion of programs, many of them are just MBA programs where you tack on a little bit of programming, a little bit of stats, or you take one stochastic calculus class, and then all of a sudden you're a financial engineer, right? Companies don't need a quick, dirty, like, I have a business degree and I'm really smart at finance, and that's great in accounting, but you don't have the quant skills to do quantitative finance. And there's a big confusion here, and I, I'm not happy with the finance side. I'm not happy with the MBA programs as you've essentially trashed MFEs as a name uh, because you've taken something that's not even the same thing. You've tried to make something better and then you've diluted it completely and just made it like a worthless degree. So there are a lot of quant financial engineering programs. Again, I wouldn't consider. You're far better getting a stats master's in many scenarios or an applied mathematics master's. Or again, if you wanna get something really good, uh, just get the PhD and it helps give you more of an edge on job applications. Uh, but I think that's why a lot of MFE don't cut like the hiring process anymore because banks are starting to get a little bit more frugal. Uh, a lot of banks, firms, hedge funds, all those different areas, right? A lot of quant finance is realizing it's too hard a lot of times to distinguish good masters from bad masters. So they'll typically only hire from tried and true like original programs and then they won't hire from any of the new ones. Or if they're really smart and they know the programs, they talk to the directors and most companies don't because it's so much work. Even me, it's hard to keep up on all the different programs. Uh, you can filter out and say like, these schools essentially are like on my do not hire list. Uh, these schools are on what I would consider hiring from. Again, it comes down to the individual. Are they smart? Do they have the right materials? Or they need to know stuff too. You can't just do it by degree here. And so I think that's why MFEs have lost a lot of value uh, back in the day, they used to be considered somewhat equivalent to PhDs. And then as if they gotten diluted over time, and then I think a lot of them have deviated in saying, well, we don't want to do math and stuff. That's too hard. And we don't want to do rigorous stats here. So we'll add in some fun, exciting stats classes that cover everything in one shot. And we'll add in, you know, one, two, maybe, you know, stat, uh, stochastic calculus classes, maybe a math class, call that a shot. And then we'll do all these really applied, fun and exciting finance classes. We'll call them, you know, quantitative finance for fixed income or quantitative risk management, uh, it's all nonsense. So that's why I think a PhD is more valuable than a master's these days. Uh, again, to be, I'm gonna do a video here, me ranting and raving about how I would make a financial engineering program or a master's. Uh, but again, if you get a master's, get one probably at a really top rated financial engineering program, computational finance program, 
well-known school, uh, based in math and engineering, not based in the business departments. Can't emphasize that enough. Uh, or good is stats or applied math. Uh, masters here, but look for schools that have good connections again to the industry. So if you have different programs that are well rated, uh, like I don't know, I don't know which the best program is, for example, in like stats or something, but if you have a really good one, you'll be able to have some connection there to the industry as well. And then you can do your networking and make your degree worth it. So again, I'm sorry, this is not like a really clear cut answer of do A or do B. Uh, there's gradients and layers and kind of pitfalls to look for. Again, the master's is quicker on time, it costs more money. The PhD is basically free, uh, but it takes you a lot more time, opens more opportunities. Uh, it's a tough personal decision. I struggled with it a lot when I was trying to figure that out. Um, anyways, so that's it. Thanks for watching, and as always, until next time.